Hello, high school lacrosse fans, and welcome to the Washington State Lacrosse <clears throat> High School Game of the Week. You are watching the Lacrosse Network, where tonight we are coming to you live from Mercer Island High School in Mercer Island, Washington, just outside of Seattle, on one of the nicer days of the year, weather-wise. The sun is setting, and we are in for some great lacrosse tonight, as the Mercer Island Islander girls are going to be taking on the Seattle prep team. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will have a special interview with Megan Monaghan, a reporter for the Mercer Island Reporter, right here on the Lacrosse Network. Welcome back to the Lacrosse Network, where tonight we are broadcasting the Washington State High School Lacrosse Game of the Week. With me right now, Megan Monaghan, the reporter for the Mercer Island Reporter. Yep. Try saying that a couple of times <laughs> fast, right? <laughs> Megan, uh, thank you for joining us, first of all. No problem. Thank you. And wanted to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about Mercer Island sports in general. But for starters, we're here broadcasting the girls' lacrosse game tonight. Let's talk a little bit about this Mercer Island team and what we can expect tonight. A team that comes into this game undefeated in division play. However, they have a 6-2 and two record with losses to both Lakeside and Lake Sammamish. Tell us about this team a little bit. It's a very strong team this season. They are currently number two in their conference. Seattle Prep is actually the number three team, so this will be a strong matchup. Um, their two losses, like you said, to Lakeside and Lake Sammamish, both pretty close games. The Lakeside match was very close early on, and the Lakeside managed to pull away in the second half, but very strong team, high scoring this year. And I was talking to Liz Shields uh, earlier today. She mentioned that she's got 11 seniors this year, the most seniors she's ever had. Is this a team that you can tell by watching them? They've definitely played together for a long period of time and a lot, a lot of teamwork, right? Yeah, definitely. It's a very strong team chemistry, and you kind of saw that from the very first game on. And I think it's only going to be great things for them for the rest of the season and into the playoffs. And let's talk about the playoffs a little bit. Aforementioned, two losses already to presumably two teams that they may, might end up seeing again in the playoffs. You watched the Lakeside game. Give us your assessment. Is this a team that's able to compete with those teams? I mean, again, you, you can't expect to go undefeated and win every game necessarily. Are they capable of playing with some of the state's better teams? Yes, definitely. Right now, Bainbridge is the undefeated team that's ahead of them in their division. And I think at this point, it really could be anybody's game going into the playoffs. And I definitely see them, you know, semifinals, you know, on for sure. I see that. And we should mention a big game coming up with that Bainbridge Island team. Yeah, it should be a very tight game, I believe. Like you said, both undefeated in the league still, so it should be a great matchup. Now let's talk a little bit in terms of the boys team. We were able to cover them a couple weeks ago right here on the Lacrosse Network. A team that right now is undefeated in league play, a team that had a very nice outing back east when they played a couple of uh, Massachusetts and Maine tops teams. And they've got a big matchup coming up with Bellevue next week. Yeah, definitely. Next week is going to be a huge match. Bellevue is only half a game behind in the standings right now, I believe. And this weekend, they're playing Bainbridge, which is always a huge match between the two island schools. So those two are definitely two games to watch in the next couple of weeks. Now, again, we're, we're here on the grounds at Mercer Island High School. You cover all things Mercer Island in terms of sports. You've seen just about every sports team, I think, that plays at this high school. Let's talk in terms of the spring sports in general. This is a school that historically does very well with spring sports. Maybe we'll start off with the golf team. Tell us a little bit about the girls' team and how they're doing. Yeah, the girls' golf team is continuing kind of the tradition that they've set for themselves. I believe it's 62 matches undefeated in league, which is pretty much unheard of in this state. Last year they placed third at the state tournament, and I have no reason to expect it to be any different this year. And tennis, swimming, everything else is looking good right now too, right? Yeah, the tennis team is still undefeated in league and having, you know, they're so deep. Right now, um, their number one girl is only a sophomore, and she's playing singles, and 
you know, there's only going to be good things to come for them. And while we're at it, spring, uh, winter sports, fall sports, another successful year for the Islanders all around. Yes, definitely. I know, um, you know, football team, they, they might not have made the playoffs last year like they wanted to, but the Kinko Conference is one of the toughest in the state. So it just speaks to the level of play that they're already at, that they were so close, and yet, you know, because it was so tough, they couldn't quite get there. And, you know, the basketball teams both made it to the state rounds last, this past winter and, you know, have continued to do very well. So it's just another day at the office and another year for the uh, the Mercer Island Islanders just continuing to dominate the way that they always do in just about every sport. And again, we're going to cover this lacrosse game tonight. Uh, expectations from the Mercer Island team as uh, as they get ready to play the Seattle prep team? I think you should um, you know, come right out of the gate hot and ready to go. You know, like I said, it's a high and that's what they do. They'll get down there and they'll get in there and they'll try and score. And they've had great defense on the other end and some great um, saves in from Andrea Hatsukami, who's the goalie, and just doing a fantastic job back there as well. And before we let you go, i got to ask you right now, this is something that we've, we've talked a little bit about on our broadcasts. As we cover the sport of lacrosse, it seems to just be growing in, in record numbers, especially in the Pacific Northwest. It's a sport that's growing all throughout the country. I think the numbers that we last heard over 4,000 students from 200 different schools are playing lacrosse at this point. Are we going to see this sport become sanctioned by the WIAA in the near future? I think it's just a matter of when. I don't think it's a matter of if now. There's so many kids who are playing this on you know a regular basis. Even in the last four years, it has just blossomed. And there's 10 times the number of teams that seem like there were a couple of years ago. So at some point, I see it happening. And this is something that's been discussed at, at that level before, correct? Correct. I think uh, about two years ago, it went before the WIA for the vote to see if it could be sanctioned. And at that point, I felt like there was a lot of good momentum and that it stood a good chance. And unfortunately, it didn't pass that time. But, you know, in the next couple of years, I see it very well could. And again, the sport just continues to grow at record numbers. We keep growing. Kids keep playing it. Hopefully, we'll get this done sooner rather than later. Again, Megan, very, thank you very much for coming on board with us here and uh, for covering the game and doing everything you do for Mercer Island. Thank you uh, for being here. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. So again, Megan Monaghan with the Mercer Island Reporter. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, the Mercer Island Islanders versus the Seattle Prep Panthers. You're watching the Lacrosse Network.
And welcome back to the Washington State Lacrosse High School Game of the Week. Once again, you are watching the Lacrosse Network. In case you're just joining us, we are at beautiful Mercer Island High School in Mercer Island, Washington, on a gorgeous evening here in the Pacific Northwest. Certainly one of, if not the nicest night of the year. The sun is heading down, and we are ready to play some lacrosse. Hi, everybody. My name is Steve Willits, and along with Talia Klein, I will be bringing you tonight's ball game between Mercer Island and Seattle Prep. This is a battle of two teams from the Alki Division, a battle of two teams that are neck and neck in the standings right now. Mercer Island with a 3 and 0 record, 6 and 2 overall on the year. Seattle Prep with a 3 and 1 division record, 4 and 6 overall on the year. A game in which if Mercer Island stumbles, Seattle Prep ties them for second place. Talia Klein, the coach of Kennedy Catholic, yes. the coach of Seattle University. Yes. You know a thing or two about these two teams. I sure do. Uh, Kennedy Catholic is actually in their division, so we have played both teams. Um, so this is an exciting game to be a part of. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, it'll be nice to get a perspective from up above to really watch these teams and see their strengths. I have a feeling, I have some predictions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold them in. Um, but be, be ready to watch uh, Mercer Island come out on fire. Yeah, two very uh, different teams, too, for mm -hmm. that matter. Mercer Island, a team with 11 seniors this year, Deep. which is 11 more than Seattle Prep, a team that has <laughs> zero seniors this year. They're building. They are, they are in rebuild <laughs> mode indeed. Uh, you know what, though? For a team that is quote-unquote rebuilding, to be at 3-1 and one this late in the season and really – in if, their division. If, and we'll, yeah. we'll call it an upset if they win tonight. We think that Mercer Island, who's wearing the white, is the favorite. Sure. If Seattle Prep can pull this off, they go into their final game of the year against Ballard in a tie for second place. You know, and I, my girls actually played Ballard tonight, and I think uh, Seattle Prep would have a great, will have a great game against Ballard. That will be a very competitive game. Um, Seattle Prep is hungry for a spot for the playoffs. We all are. Um, so we'll just see how this goes, how this shakes out. And as we say that, they're ready for the draw. There we go. Game underway. Mercer Island, we're in the home white. Seattle Prep in the road blue. And right off the bat. Still fighting for still it. Still fighting for that ball. Seattle Prep comes up with the draw control. That's huge. Greta Richardson comes up with it, number 27. Still fighting. <laughs> There we go. like to see that, and unfortunately... Cause turnover, number eight, Mercer Island. That <laughs> was beautiful. Nice fight by Greta. Unfortunately, the pass wasn't so much, and Mercer Island coming Ooh. down with their first possession. So the thing about Mercer Island is the ball, the ball rarely touches the ground. They're very solid in their passing and their transition, as you can see right now. They're just working the ball down the field and being very patient. It's nice to see. And again, a team with 11 seniors, a, a team that's played together for quite a while, and... You can definitely see the teamwork in effect right now. As, as you mentioned, the ball very rarely touches the ground, has yet to touch the ground on this possession. Correct. Oh, And I jinxed her on that one, soon. unfortunately. And as I say that, the ball is turned over. That's number 11, Olivia Catcliffe um, oh. coming up with a ball. That's a common call we hear this season, checking the sphere. Uh, you're not allowed to check between six inches over your shoulder, over your head to your other shoulder keeping the game safe the refs love it and one thing I wanted to point out about Olivia too I, I mispronounced her name I, per, I apologize for that it's Kofflish Olivia was actually their goalie early on in the year because their starting goalie Maggie McDonald unlucky has never played lacrosse before this year she was playing on the basketball team well, you know, as a coach, I would take a basketball player over a soccer player any day. The offense and the defense are virtually the same in lacrosse, except for there are two more players. So if you have a basketball mind frame and you jump in goal, you should be really well equipped to uh, understand and read the game. So that makes sense as to why she's having some success. And as soon as I say that, she gets shot on, and it's a goal. Number four, Tyler Sherper. Big surprise there. Tyler's leading the team in goals this year. She had 34 coming into tonight. Make that 35. Puts Mercer Island on the board with 22.57 to go here in the first half. one nothing Islanders. You know, I have to say, being able to be objective and watch Seattle Prep's defense from up above, 
They've got great defensive positioning. If they can just get a little tighter, Mercer Island, what Mercer Island loves to do is they, they don't really slow the ball in the midfield. They race it down and do quick passes within the eight. So Seattle Prep is really going to have to step up and get their stick to stick and mark them that way so that they can shut them down. And we will say this for Prep. They, uh, they may not be getting on the board yet. However, 2-0 and so far here on the draw. Yeah, now they just got to finish and hold on to the ball. Exactly. Number two, Madison Blackburn coming down with the ball. Blackburn, who their coach Liz Shields told me is tireless. They said she can run all day long, and I'm sure we're going to see enough of number two tonight, and uh, we'll be watching her on the defensive side of things. Number 48, Sarah Walters coming up with mm. the ball right now. Midfielder with three goals and one assist on the year. There we go. A lot of times in lacrosse, if you're patient, the air will happen on its own. You don't always have to force it. Sometimes it just happens. And if you're in the right position, like number 21 is in the middle of the field, boom. Let's see if Seattle Prep can get on the boards here. Yeah, number 21, that's uh, Claire Colfo right there. She is wide open right now. So we wait for play to resume. I also think Mercer Island is off sides. They are. So in lacrosse, when you're on the attack, you can have seven players over the restraining line, which is marked at the 30-yard line, and you have to have four defensive players back. So it's, a, it's an automatic change of possession. And the player has moved back at this point. And just like we pointed out, pass goes immediately to Calfo. That was unfortunate. That possession, because she was wide open, when they moved her back over the line, she got the disadvantage of the foul. That's a new rule this year. And immediately the Islanders oh. on the attack here. That's number five, Dulce Mole. Mole shoots and Mole scores. So one of the issues with what just happened, the breakdown in the defense there, there's really no, it, there doesn't seem to be a lot of double teaming the ball when the ball's coming in on pressure, coming in hot on the eight. If Seattle Prep can slow down the ball and they can have help and slide take over other players, then it won't just be a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, one of the girls up here went for the check and missed, and she ran right by her, and she was open to get inside, and that's what Mercer Island lives for. They love the inside small game. It's called threading the needle. And Sherper comes up with the draw this time. Mercer Island already with a two-goal lead, threatening for more here. Boom. Shoots, scores! Yep. Sherper with a shot into the lower right-hand corner, right on by McDonald. And just like that, Mercer Island 3, Seattle Prep 0. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Mercer Island, you know, they have a deep sideline. They've got 11 seniors on the field. They are strong. They, I would say the whole team is tireless. Um, they just run with a lot of intensity for every single ball, which is great to see because in lacrosse, the game of lacrosse can change so quickly. It's the fastest game on two feet, and if you if you let your guard down for two seconds, goals will be scored. And that's number 42, Taylor Dahlgren, who uh, was the player on the draw. She ends up coming up with the ball as well. Nice play by Dahlgren, and we get an immediate whistle. So... Seattle Prep made the adjustment on the last transition down the field. Nobody went to double the team, double the ball in the transition, and they just all tried to. Again, they're not doubling now, which is um, going to prove to be problematic because they're, Mercer Island's so strong, they'll just drive it in. A name we have not called yet today, Saffron Sneathan has the ball right now. That's number 27. Great defense. Sherper Ooh. looking for her third goal Whoops. of the game already, and this time we're going to get a penalty call. Yeah, there was, a, there was a check to the head there. So Seattle preps now man down, which is unfortunate for two minutes. That is Greta Richardson, number 27, the sophomore who, when I talked to Lindsey Gillis, the head coach of Seattle Prep earlier today, had nothing but praise for her, uh, said that, in her words, she was psyched to have her for the next two years, loves the way she plays. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, they're maybe a little too aggressive. Yeah. You know, a lot of times those calls are accidental. No one really wants to check anyone in the head. Um, the refs have to keep it safe. So even if an offensive player sometimes runs into the defensive stick, you got to give it to the offense. It's Katie Harris, number 22, with the ball right oh. now. Nice pass by Harris into the middle. Shot on goal. Missed. missed it. 
That was Annalise Weiss looking for her second goal of the season. Doesn't get it. Whoa. Check to the head, Mercer Island. Mercer Island, what they have, because they have such strong um, athletes and speed, they will swarm you in the middle. But now this means that some players on Seattle Prep are open because there were three players marked on uh, marked on the ball carrier right now, number 13. She's got to tuck her cradle in and protect it because Mercer Island is going to go for that. Whoops. And they are, and she was swarmed on defense. Unfortunately for her, number 13, Mia Campbell, with an ill-advised pass, gets away from her, and that's going to be Mercer Island ball. Interesting uh, note, you and I were talking about this earlier today. Liz Shields, or I'm sorry, Lindsey Gillis is the coach of Seattle Prep. Lindsey's husband, Brad, knows a thing or two about Mercer Island, doesn't he? It sounds like he does. Uh, he was a graduate in 2004 and was on Ian O'Hearn's first state champ team. So they've got a little lacrosse family in, in the making going on there. So maybe he's got some secrets he can tell her to fire up his Seattle prep team here in the Yeah, and this might be the, the, game. the one time of the year. And there's a nice pass inside there. Nice shot by number 42, Taylor Dahlgren. Just can't quite find the mark. However, Mercer Island does maintain possession. Sneathan with the ball. Um, another interesting story with her. She is actually slated to go to Mount Olive College mm -hmm. in North uh, Carolina next year. The same college that head coach Liz, Liz Shields, two sons go to and are playing at. Well, isn't that just <laughs> convenient? Nice, huh? Yeah. No, you think that might be coincidental? Or? I think... You know? Small college, North Carolina. Yeah, I think there's some magic going on there. Yeah, I talked to Alicia Shields about that earlier today, and, and she mentioned it's the first year of the program there at Mount Olive. And uh, I said, did you have anything to do with that? And she said, well, they did want some videotape on some of our players, and we, we sent Sneed in, <laughs> and apparently she does have family that lives in the area too. Oh, so, well, that's uh, good. So we're going to have a nice Mercer Island connection over right at, uh, on. I at like that. Mount Olive. You know, anytime Washington girls can play lacrosse anywhere in the country for college, I think that's great. There are so many opportunities, not just D1. There's club, there's D3, there's D2, and it's all very competitive. It's exciting to watch it grow and see all of our girls from the West Coast get an opportunity to play at the collegiate level. And the nice thing, too, is that this, the growth of the sport at the collegiate level on the West Coast is, is growing rapidly as well. Oh, Nice spin move there. Oh, Shoots and scores. Heart, that's heartbreaking. So when you're defending down low, it is so important to keep your feet squared and not open up your hips so that the offensive player can squeeze in on the inside. When you give up that inside position, it's just a one – V zero against the goalie. It's really not what you want your uh, your goalie to be experiencing. And Talia Klein, I got to tell you, I wish we had a camera up in the booth because <laughs> the visual you gave me as to how that works, it, it's great. I mean, you taught me a lot there. <laughs> Fortunately, the viewer doesn't get to see it, but but I learned something. That was good. Thank you. Kinesthetic commentating, <laughs> which we like. So yeah. uh, again, it's four to zero here. Mercer Island with the lead, sixteen fifty four to go here in the first half. Hey fans, Wrecking Ball Demolition is a proud sponsor of the Lacrosse Network Washington High School Game of the Week. Wrecking Ball Demolition offers full building demolitions, neater, cleaner, faster. Wrecking Ball Demolition, demolition with a difference. To learn more, visit WreckingBallDemo.com or call 425-339-3111. Think fit. Sticks to Schools is the youth fitness program of the Washington Stealth. With Sticks to Schools, Stealth players encourage fitness and healthy lifestyles by introducing lacrosse to your school or youth group. To bring Sticks to Schools to your school or your youth group, or to learn how your business can support this initiative program, visit Sticks2Schools.com. That's Sticks, the number two, schools.com. Should point out also, uh, since we just read the Sticks to Schools read, the Washington Stealth having another good year. Our uh, box lacrosse team that plays up in Everett. Yeah. Nine wins, seven losses. Just finished the year in second place in their division. Wow. They've got a big playoff game at the Comcast Arena up in Everett at 4.30 on Saturday against the Edmonton Rush. Uh, it's been fun to have a professional lacrosse team in town in the last few years. We know that the uh, the Stealth uh, won the championship in 2010. I was aware of that. Yeah, their, I, their I heard year. that. And then 2011, lost in the championship game. Stumbled a little bit last year, and uh, they've since uh, rebounded and are looking to 
potentially get to their third championship in four years. I think that's really exciting. I mean, you think about it, though. A lot of um, stellar lacrosse players come from the East Coast, and Seattle's such a huge metropolis for um, highly educated people who went to Ivy League schools and played, you know, so it's it's great that we have all these transplants out here really elevating the game and bringing awareness to lacrosse to the whole state. It's really exciting. One day, professional women's lacrosse league. Uh, that might be next. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. If we keep growing the way it is right now. I think we're not too far off. Uh, stay that would, tuned. That would surely be exciting, no doubt. Uh, as we await this draw, we are ready for more action. Once again, Mercer Island out to a quick 4 nothing lead here. Just a little under 17 minutes to go in the first half. Surprise, surprise, Taylor Dahlgren comes up with the ball once again. Mm-hmm. You know, if I were coaching Seattle Prep right now, I would be having them take a few steps closer to the ball carrier and make sure that there's someone there to double. Nice save, goalie. Great that save. That was awesome. Maggie McDonald gets the save on the Dahlgren shot. Dahlgren wide open there. Nobody on the defense watching her. McDonald had to do it all by herself there, and she uh, made a nice Great play. Great crash. There we go. It looks like Seattle prep for the first few minutes of the game just wasn't really communicating. It's hard to tell from up here. But once you start communicating, then you're allowed to hear where your teammates are, and you can feel them more, and it's more intuitive, and, and you know when to crash and really collapse on the ball. So here we go. There we go. Crash. Sneathan with a nice, nice move. There we go. Great defensive play that looked to be number 15, Maggie Slack on the play. Yeah. It went off her stick, so it's still Mercer Island's ball. Her being Seattle Prep 15, Maggie. And Maggie, a player who Lindsey Gillis said runs the field better than anyone. She's, uh, again, we, we kind of mentioned one of the other players earlier, just seems to have an abundance of energy. Nice play on her behalf there as uh, Sneathan got by her initially, and she didn't let her go. Yeah. That is Madison Blackburn with the ball right now. Number great, two. Great slide. Uh, another shot by Dahlgren. Once again, another save by the, uh, the basketball player, Maggie huge, McDonald. Huge. And we started to talk about Maggie earlier. Again, a basketball player, uh, Seattle Prep, graduating 12 players last year. Mercer We're Island is just swarming Seattle Prep. Seattle Prep's got to do a better job spreading the field and getting open. If they're going to send four players on the transition, three players are open. they got to pass the ball instead of running it. And that's a lot of that's just out of frustration. They want to get the ball past the 50. So once again, Sherper, who's already got three goals tonight. Nice pass oh. into the middle. Dahlgren cutting through. Can't quite hold on to it. Ball is loose. And pulling it out is number 16, oh. Annalise Weiss. As Mercer Island's about to take another shot here. Sherpa driving into the middle, shoots and scores. Sherpa is so good. She is so good. I can't, I'm pretty sure she's right-handed, but she's equally as skilled with her left hand. And that's um, Liz Shields to Liz Shields' credit. She really teaches her players how to use both hands um, quite fluently. Yeah, Sherper just shooting it just to the left of McDonald. Nothing she could do there. Sherper with uh, four goals with just under or over 10 minutes into this game. 14-29 left on the clock. Mercer Island up 5-0. They're giving her a break. Sherper's out. Resting her up. And I have a feeling we haven't seen the end of Sherper tonight. And, uh, I don't think so. She may not be done so. scoring either for I that matter. I don't think so. But, you know, if Mercer Island's really wanting to be a contender in the state playoffs, I think it's a pretty safe bet at this point. Mercer Island's very strong in this game. You want to rest your, your strongest players when the, when the biggest games are coming up. There's no need to run her into the ground at this point. So I'm sure we'll see her again, but you, know, you want to keep your athletes healthy for sure. And looking down on that bench, Mercer Island with six substitutes suited up tonight. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of action from everybody as this game goes on, assuming that it continues to go the way it is right now with Mercer Island appearing to just be the dominant team here. Mm -hmm. Possession is key. Whoever holds the ball, ball controls the game. It's very simple and sometimes um, seems too simple. Seattle Prep just needs to get the ball and hold on to it and stop Mercer Island from scoring. Dulce Mole with the shot wide left on that play. Mole, as we mentioned earlier, with her 20th goal of the season earlier. Nice backup by Taylor Dahlgren to uh, ensure that Mercer Island keeps possession there. And once again, the Islanders are threatening. What 
Mercer Island does so well and why they're having such success in getting inside the eight is they spread out their attack and give the ball carrier space to move. The One of the hardest things to teach kids who haven't been playing lacrosse for a long time is that it's actually better to move away from the ball in order to create space. They, they seem like they want to run towards the ball because they want to get it. And Mercer Island is giving ball carrier space and pulling defense away, which is exactly what you have to do. Maddie Cantor, number 12, the midfielder for Mercer Island, with a shot that goes just a little wide left on that last play. Seattle Prep, to their credit, finally getting a stop here. Took him a couple minutes, but they were managed or able to hold on and to prevent Mercer Island from scoring a goal this time around. And we get a whistle. Seattle Prep will maintain the possession here with just a little under 12 and a half to go in the first half. Another thing that's hard to teach kids is, uh, although she's doing a great job, I, I take that back. It's always good when you have a free position to change the, fi the field. If the ball's on the right, throw the ball to the left and get defense shaken up and have them have to readjust. Nice play there as... Once again, Maggie Slack for Seattle Prep, number 15, scrambles to get the ball. She was going up against Brenna Yost, the defender for Mercer Island, number seven. There we go. There's some midfield pressure. I like it. Nice 17. Yost finally swings a pass over to Blackburn, number two. Blackburn coming right down the middle here. Looks over. Nice swing pass to Dole. Shoots and scores. Dulce Mole with another goal. Her second of the game, and suddenly Mercer Island up 6-0 with 11.34 to go in the first half. Mercer Island just reads this field so beautifully. It's clockwork. They know where to move. If somebody moves to the right, somebody else moves to the left. They're, they're fluid. They're working as a team, and to their credit, they've been playing together for years, so they should look like this. <laughs> if they didn't, it would be concerning. Well, now, a question I was going to ask you later yes. on in the broadcast, but hey. There we go, Seattle Prep. Seattle Prep finally getting it and maybe oh. getting a drive. Oh, pass is going to get away from number 21. Unlucky. That's Clara Calfo. It's frustrating. So the question I was going to ask you, and I was hoping we were going to get a little bit closer game here so it wouldn't be a question that we had to bring up right away, but <laughs> it looks like Mercer Island might win this game tonight. <laughs> maybe. If they do, they yeah. remain undefeated in league play. Bamber in division play. In division play, yeah. rather. Bainbridge Island also undefeated in division play. Mm -hmm. Sets up a nice showdown coming up on May 1st at Bainbridge between these two teams, which should be for the Alki division title. Correct. And remembering that Bainbridge is a state champ for the last maybe, well, has been in the state championships for the last 10 years for sure. Last year won it. They're always in the championship game. The thing about Bainbridge, they are so solid. They are so solid. If I had my predictions against these two teams, I would say Bainbridge will beat Mercer Island. And you've also you've coached against both teams already this I year, have. correct? Are we looking at a game that could be fairly close? Oh, it'll be competitive, absolutely. Absolutely. Bainbridge just takes lacrosse to a whole different level. <laughs> it's 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 more like college play. And Mercer Island, I will not discredit them. They are looking solid right now. In fact, they look better than when they, when when we played them 2 weeks ago. Um Bainbridge just, they're patient, they're methodical, they, they have plays all over the field. Um, it'll be a great game to watch. I, I wouldn't bet a lot of money on it, but maybe $2 at Bainbridge. <laughs> Which is good. That's, betting's illegal <laughs> in the state of Washington, and especially I think it's doubly illegal on high school girls lacrosse. Well, so we're happy you're not betting on that. Yeah. <laughs> Right. But, uh, uh, no Pete Rose here. I, I don't want to bet on the game. I'm, I'm in the league. Well, especially, <laughs> yeah, you're in their division, rather. Exactly. So I am. it's even more so. Oh, but, man. Uh, but, yeah, um, Bainbridge Island, a team who uh, played Seattle Prep earlier this year and beat them 18-6, to just to put that into a little bit of perspective for you if you're watching this game. And, uh, boy, I'm, I'm finding it hard to believe that uh, they put up a six spot on them right now. Well, I will also say this about Bainbridge. They don't score beyond 18. They can. They choose not to. Calling off the dogs, is that what we call that? You, you know, it's, <laughs> I actually think it's very classy. There's no point in, in running up the score and making these young kids feel annihilated. You know, you can tell when the game is won, and then at that point, practice. Practice your plays. Make your skills sharper. So um, I, find, I find Bainbridge to be very classy in that regard. Yeah, and that's uh, something that I know uh, Liz Shields talked about earlier today, too. Uh, Mercer Island having won four straight games now. 
And I know she, we, we were talking a little bit in terms of how the team is looking since the two losses. And she mentioned that even though they're getting wins, it's not always about how much you win by. Sometimes you just you want to make sure that the team – there are teams you're going to play throughout your season that you're just better than them. Oh. Shot on goal, almost in. Almost nice save in. there. So now that we know if Seattle Prep can get possession and hold on to the ball and slow down the game, they're competitive. They just got to get the ball. And that was Hatsukami with a uh, nice save there. We have yet to call her name at all tonight. And uh, the way this game's going, we may not call it very many, very many other times as well. So Hatsukami with a nice save on that end. And then on the other end, Maggie McDonald with a save. Mercer Island is just so strong in the midfield, and I would attribute most of that to fitness. I bet they spend a ton of time in the offseason training, training, training. You know, it's, um, it's evident. They're so fast. They're so fast in the midfield. If Seattle Prep can control the ball, they can get some shots on goal, and I, I think they will be successful. They just have to slow the game down. That's where the skill comes in, right? Their defense is just being shelled left and right, left and right. Hold on to the ball. Go back. Oh, there we go. Oh, wide There's open a transition. Play there. There's slack coming down. The slide in, slide in. Goes through the middle, shoots, yes. scores. There we go. We're on the board. <laughs> a nice shot by Maggie Slack. There we goes go. Goes lower left-hand corner. Gets it by Hatsukami. First goal of the game. The scoreboard showing 99 to 6. I don't think that's right. They finally <laughs> fixed it. It is 6 to 1 now. Boy, if only that was a 99 uh, goal goal there, they would take that gladly. However, it is 6 to 1. Mercer Island with the lead. But they fought for that goal. Let me tell you, that was pretty. That was pretty. They are in it to win it. They're not letting down. You know, sure, they're frustrated right now. Nobody wants to play a first half and just get shelled. But they're holding Mercer Island. You know, defensively, if they could slide more in the midfield and slow Mercer Island's speed down, they will have more success. But that play was just really nice to see. Yeah, Slack, the third leading scorer on the season. That was her 13th goal. She's one of three team captains on the Seattle Prep Whoa. team. One of three players that had played varsity last year for Prep. As we mentioned earlier, this is a team that graduated 12 players last year. Uh, Slack, the other two being uh, Annie Gillis, number 10. No relation to the coach, by the way. Got it. And Elise Fiedler, uh, number 7. Uh, the only three players that had any varsity experience last wow. year. Wow. That's incredible. Another shot on nice. goal, and it gets in there. That's number 27, Greta Richardson. We just mentioned Slack was the number 3 scorer on the year. Richardson with the second most goals. That is her 19th. And all of a sudden, a 6-0 to zero ball game. That was it's pretty. Six to two. That was pretty nice. That was a pretty low-angle shot, too. Impressive. Impressive. I like it. And so, Let's do you, it again. Yeah, this is how fast this game can turn. Six minutes till half. If Seattle prep fires up and digs deep, they could have four more goals. I've seen a goal scored in 12 seconds off the draw. If you win a draw right here, you could cut the lead in half in just a matter of two or three minutes. Right? This is why we love this sport. For many reasons. <laughs> Unfortunately for prep, they do not win the draw this time. <laughs> Taylor time. Dahlgren, who uh, had 36 draws coming into the season, and she's certainly winning her share tonight as well, continuing to play well on her end, and we're going to see Mercer Island's offense one more time. Mercer Island's going to take it to him right now. They're going to punish him for those two goals. I have a feeling. And look who's back in the oh, game. Yeah. Sure, weird. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, nice pass there. Gets it into the middle. Shot and score. <laughs> Talia Klein, you are well, Nostradamus. A little bit of a psychic. <laughs> nice prediction there as Madison Blackburn <laughs> takes the pass from Sherper, puts it into the back of the net. Mercer Island back on top here, 7-2 to two with 6.21 to go in the first half. Hey, the Lacrosse Network Washington High School Game of the Week is produced in cooperation with U.S. Lacrosse Washington State Chapter, Washington High School Boys Lacrosse Association, and the Washington School Girls Lacrosse Association. Thanks to Tim Exton and 715 Media for providing production services for tonight's broadcast. Special thanks to Mike McQuaid, Sports Information Director of U.S. Lacrosse Washington State Chapter, Mercer Island High School Athletic Director Jamie Prescott, and tonight's coaches... Liz Shields from Mercer Island and Lindsey Gillis from Seattle Prep. Hey, guess what? Shoots and scores. Number 22, Katie Harris. Before you can even get a read finished, <laughs> they win a draw, drive down the field, and put another ball into the back of the net. Harris getting her fifth goal of the season first tonight. 
Mercer Island back up 8-2 to two with 5.56 to go here in the first half. Yeah, defense. Let's talk about it. <laughs> or we, lack thereof? Well, no, they have it. They're, they're just not doing the right things. They're staying so man-to-man. -man, there's no slide and there's no help, which is essential in lacrosse. You erred in women's lacrosse. You have to be able to slide to the ball carrier, especially if she's crashing. If your offense is doing their job, they want to try to get you outside the eight, which they've done very well against Seattle Prep. A good defense will hang on the eight so that they can con continue to slide and crash and communicate with their team. Ooh, Sherpa mm. just went down, and she's kind of limping, looks like a little bit, but maybe she's going to shake that off. We will keep an eye on that. Nice shot nice. and score. Seattle Prep number 10, Annie Gillis, the leading scorer for Prep this year, puts her 25th ball into the back of the net for the season. She's Seattle. not. She's Seattle Prep limping. once again, 8-3, <laughs> to three, and uh, that's good news for uh, Mercer Island. <laughs> the bad news for them, they give up another oh. goal, and Prep is now within five with 5.21 to go here in the first half. You turn around for one second, and there's another goal. These teams are just going at it rapidly right now. That's it. Pound it. That's what they want to do. You wait the draw here. Oh, illegal draw. We're going to redraw that one. The girls are getting feisty. Oh, it's calling it on Seattle Prep. Interesting. Kind of looked like they both did it, but that's uh, that's why there are referees closer to the ball <laughs> than we are. Yeah, that's number 27, Greta Richardson for Seattle Prep, going against Taylor Dahlgren, number 42. They've had some very nice draws, the two of them, so far tonight, and uh, I think that's going to continue on throughout the rest of this first half and into the second half. Another shot by number 22, Katie Harris was looking for her second goal of the night. Sails that one just a little bit to the left. Let's see what their goalie does here. I'm wondering, I, I have a feeling Mercer Island won't pressure the goalie. They'll mark up on all the players so that the goalie won't have an option. Oh, and she passes in the middle, which is a very, whoa, that girl's fast. Yes, Maggie Slack, oh, we talked about her earlier. Oh, she's going to check that. She's still running down there the field. We, go. Oh, we mentioned earlier, Slack can call. run. So in lacrosse, They've, they've really they've really cracked down on the back checks, even though they're legal. But what they're looking for is that you release, that you don't do a tomahawk chalk. Oh, unlucky. And by the way, that was Megan Kearney, uh, number five, the defender for Seattle Prep, getting called on the play. If you look at the field right now, Mercer Island has four girls completely unmarked. That's why their transition is so successful. Sneed because they have the speed to beat Seattle Prep because Seattle Prep's always coming up from behind. And we are going to get a call against Prep on this play. It looks like it's number four, Tess Jordan, midfielder, who was trying to check Sneathan on the play. Sneathan, who we mentioned earlier, going to Mount Olive next year. Swings it over to Dulce Mall, who's going, nice to, the, defense. going oh. to the University of Redlands next year. She's and she so puts fast. a ball into the back of the net. Score. She's so fast. They have great stick positioning. When the ball goes down, they're grabbing the ball with such control because they have great control of their stick. A lot of players, when they're not so skilled, they'll hold their stick at the bottom, far th furthest away from the head, and that's just way too much stick to try to control. So the reason why number four, Dulce, and why Sherpa are so successful is they've got a, a very solid controlled grip on their stick. It's really nice to see. And Mole with her, again, third goal of the night. Second player now with a hat trick on the team. Nine to three, Mercer Island with 3.30 to go here in the first half. Loose ball right now, picked up once again by Taylor Dahlgren. Big surprise. Pop it up. There we go, Seattle. Oh, the yeah. And we're going to get a whistle. That ball's going to go to Seattle Prep. Hey, from Spokane to Seattle and Linden to Camas, high school lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in Washington State. Now in its fourth decade of play, 4,000 student athletes attending 200 schools in Washington State will play high school lacrosse this season. To learn more about high school lacrosse in Washington State, visit Washington HSLAX. Dot com. That's Washington, dot com. 2.44 to go here in the first half. Seattle Prep trailing right now, 9-3. to 
But they do have the ball, and let's see what they can do here on this possession. Mercer Island's defense is just like a wall. It's nice to see. I like it. Oh. Kayla Ayers with the ball, number 17, almost bats it into the goal there as it's loose. Ball is still rolling around on the turf. Nice but control. Nice control. That's exactly what you want to see. Someone recognize the double team and pull away from danger. That was very beautifully played. Maggie Slack once again with the ball. As she uh, And now if Seattle Prep can just control it, slow it down, and make sure that they take the time to have a perfect shot. And once again, that is Ayers with the ball. Kayla Ayers, she has 21 goals on the season, still looking for her first tonight. Nice control. Oh, across the tried to thread the needle. Looking for her teammate there. Doesn't quite get it. That was number 10, Annie Gillis, cutting through the middle. Unfortunately for her, ball is batted down. And once again, a, a nice defensive play by the goaltender, Hatsukami. And in transition, here comes Mercer Island one more time. That is number 12 with the ball right now, Maddie Cantor. We mm. mentioned her name earlier. Maddie looking for her fifth goal of the year. Takes a shot. It gets loose. Oh, empty stick check or maybe even a check from – you can't check up. And I think as they were fighting Mercer Island, her stick got underneath number 12 and kind of pushed it up to the face. You're not allowed to check towards Ooh, the Ooh, dangerous pass oh, there. Man. Sherper picks it off. Let's see what she can do here. We're down to 127 to go here in the first half. Clock should be running, oh. however it's not. And shot and score. Oh. Annalise Weiss, number 16, with her first goal of the game. Tenth goal of the night for Mercer Island as they increase their lead to 10-3 to with 127 to go. So one, one of the reasons why that goal was scored so beautifully is because Sherpa telegraphed that, uh, telegraphed that pass and picked it off. It was really, really cool to see. Wrecking Ball Demolition is pr a proud sponsor of the Lacrosse Network Washington High School Game of the Week. Wrecking Ball Demolition offers full building demolitions, neater, cleaner, faster. Wrecking Ball Demolition, demolition with a difference. To learn more, visit WreckingBallDemo.com or call 425-339-3111. I have some breaking news. Okay, what do we have? At the half, Lakeside 4, Bainbridge 0. Whoa. I'm digging it. <laughs> I'm digging it. We also have the final scores for girls across Roosevelt 18, Wenatchee 8. The boys score, Gig Harbor 12, Clahalia 5. Uh, boys score, Union 7, Camus 4. Boys score Everett 17, Monroe 1. Ouch. Boys score Tahoma 12, Liberty 2. Boys score Mercer Island 13, Curtis 3. Another final score, girls across, Kennedy 10, Ballard 9. And we should point out that all, all these scores are coming to us via Twitter off of the Washington High School Lacrosse Twitter account, which is Washington HSLAX. A great source for getting scores, and you can go to the website for that matter as well, Washington HSLAX. Uh, it's the way that I usually get my scores throughout the day. I know Mike <laughs> McQuaid and his group do a wonderful job of keeping us posted as to what's going on. And uh, we've come to the end of the first half of play with our score. Mercer Island, someone's doing push-ups. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, you're up 10-3. to 3. Mercer Island 10, <laughs> Seattle Prep 3. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return – we have a special guest for our halftime show, Mercer Island football coach, Brett Agata. You are watching the Washington State High School Lacrosse Game of the Week on the Lacrosse Network. And we are back again on the Washington State Lacrosse High School Game of the Week. You are watching the Lacrosse Network. 
Our halftime score at this girls game, Mercer Island 10, Seattle Prep 3. And during our halftime tonight, a very special guest, a uh, person who I'm proud to call my friend, uh, Brett Ogata, the head football coach at Mercer Island High School. Brett, how are you? Great. Thank you for having me on. Hey, thank you for uh, being on with us. Uh, first and foremost, i got to give people your bio a little bit here. You are a 1989 graduate of Mercer Island. You played for the team. You, uh, you set a receiving record for most receiving yards in a game. And you played for uh, Coach Nickel, who was here for many years. And uh, now you are the new Coach Nickel, so to speak. You've uh, taken his spot since then. Right off the bat, uh, what's it like to coach at your alma mater? It's it's a wonderful experience. I mean, I've always it was a dream of mine to come back here, be part of this community. It's a great place to grow up, great community, and and to be a part of the football program is just something I always uh, wanted to do, and it's pretty exciting. It's just living a dream. And now, again, we mentioned Coach Nickel earlier, who was here, I believe, for close to thirty years. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of pressure is that on you? I mean, you're walking in some big footsteps there, and somebody who you probably admire and respect quite a bit. It, it is big shoes. I mean, Coach Nickel is awesome. He was one of the best coaches uh, in the in the Kinko League ever, and uh, it is big shoes to fill. But it's uh, it's something I'm excited to be able to follow in his footsteps and try to you know, create a, a great legacy behind them. So. And now I have to ask you too, Mercer Island, a, we mentioned this on our pregame show earlier and we were talking to Megan from the Mercer Island Reporter. This is a school that is notorious for having outstanding sports programs uh, and many state titles. As a football coach, I mean, do you feel that pressure? Do you feel like you have to go out and uh, it's it's – it's win all or nothing on a, on a year to year basis. What's this? What's that like for you? Uh, it, it, you know, it's it's about the culture of football. You know, we have a big culture of of winning a lot of state titles, like you said. But in football, that hasn't really been the case. We've been really successful and we've won, but we haven't won. You know, the league titles, the state titles. Um, so really, that's a that's the thing we have to change here at the school, and we've been doing a really good job of that. Kids are committed, and it's been really fun. And you know, there's really no pressure because I think the kids really want to do well and, and the parents are very supportive and the community is great. So. And, and talking about expectations, I should point out too, since we didn't have a lot of time to read your bio, one thing that struck me, first uh, back-to-back winning seasons, uh, I guess it was 11 and 12, or 10 and 11 rather, yeah. first time in 10 years. So uh, you're already kind of doing that, aren't you? Yeah, it's it's been great. I mean, the, the kids have really bought into what we're trying to do here and it's, we're working hard and it's been, uh, it's been really good. So I've been... Uh, We've had a chance to turn around this program, and hopefully we have another winning season coming up. Okay, and uh, expectations this year? You, I know you, you go against Bellevue. You go against Mount Sinai and Juanita year in and year out. Uh, same thing again this year. What, what can we expect from Mercer Island this year? Well, we're going to have a young team, uh, but very energetic, very uh, you know, hardworking group, and they're going to be awesome. And it's, uh, I'm excited to see these guys uh, and, really perform. And we're excited to watch you. Hey, again, Brett Ogata, thank you very much for coming on with us here, and uh, most uh, more success to you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That was Brett Agata from uh, the Mercer Island High School. You're watching the Lacrosse Network. And when we return, the second half of action of our high school game of the week. And we are back for the second half of action right here on the Lacrosse Network. Once again, you are watching the Washington State Lacrosse High School Game of the Week live from Mercer Island High School, where tonight the Islanders of Mercer Island currently hold a 10-3 to lead over the Seattle Prep Panthers. Talia Klein, first yes, half sir. thoughts. Well, I'm happy to see Seattle Prep fighting. I, I think they're giving a good show given what they have in terms of the depth of their team against an 11 senior squad Mercer Island team. Um, you know, it's exciting to watch Seattle prep. In a few years, they're going to be great. Um, this is pretty typical Mercer Island. They like to drive to goal. Uh, they like to move fast. They pass the ball well. Um, and I just I expect to see really not much strain from that in the second half. Um, they don't really use a lot of plays. They just they use the fact that they have such good stick skills that they catch everything and their spacing is so good that it's almost as if every drive is a play. 
Yeah, and the thing that I noted was, again, we mentioned this earlier, and we'll mention it again, I'm sure, Seattle Prep with no seniors on their team, Mercer Island with a handful of seniors, um, and again, some of these players are actually already committed to playing college ball next year. Sherper is going to be going to Colgate. Mole is going to be playing at the University of Redlands. Sneathan is going to be playing at Mount Olive. These are three college players next year yeah. going up against a bunch of girls who are going to be back on this field yeah. again, playing high school still. You're seeing the difference in a in age and in experience too. Absolutely, and and the the level of difference, the level of play between college and high school, even on a senior deep team, is night and day. Sherpa will be against players that are all at her level. I mean, it's just it's a whole different ball game. Nice Seattle Prep with the draw control. Let's see if they can if they can finish. It would be so great for their spirits if they could get a goal in the early part of this this half and unfortunately the pass goes a little bit awry there that was number 10 annie gillis trying to get the ball over to annika peterson number 37 out of bounds let's see what defensive adjustments they made now they're doubling the ball which is great they've got to slow it down you know what you want to see as a coach of any team playing this game is you really want to see once there's been a turnover on the attack and all of a sudden your attack is now defense you want to see those four girls who stay back when they're not on defense fighting for the ball triple teaming the ball quadruple teaming the ball all the way to the 30 yard line to the restraining line they got to fight from restraining line to restraining line that's their job and it seems like seattle prep maybe had a little bit of a talking to in the in the halftime and learned that lesson and gillis once again driving right down this time she uh Gets a little bit more of a crisp pass off. Gets it over to one of her teammates there. I believe that was number 21 on the play, Claire Calfo. So one of the issues right, right now, Mercer Island's doing a great job. They're they're looking to slide and looking to du looking to double. Nice move Seattle there. Is Prep, a yeah, I was just going to say Seattle Prep has to find the open player. When 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 Mercer Island makes that commitment to slide, somebody is open. Prep had me fooled there a couple times as I was trying to follow the ball and couldn't tell who had it. Nice uh, nice cutting uh, by the prep players there as they look for a, a play here of some sort to set up to uh, to get this ball into the back of the net. Seem to be uh, very patient in taking their time here. Again, at some point, the clock becomes an enemy. They're down by seven yeah. right now with 23 minutes to go, but They're certainly good. you don't want to panic yet, right? No, and you know what? At this point, I would actually tell them, hold on to the ball as much as possible. They're not stalling. They're looking for opportunities. But you don't want Mercer Island to score anymore. If Mercer Island's not going to pressure you, pass the ball around the perimeter all day long. I mean, and then you get fouls, and that's awesome. That's what you want. That's exactly what you want because Mercer Island's going to have to – oh, it, that's a um, not a major foul, so they don't have to clear the eight-meter. However, it does give Monica Zunick a chance to get in there. Oh, Takes Aaron. a shot. Can't get that one to go. Seattle Prep's going to get that back. Fun little rule in the cross. Even if you shoot and the ball goes out of bounds, if you're the closest player to the end line, it's still yours. That's fun. Blue was the closest. Blue, Blue with the, the ball. Blue was the closest, exactly. We call it garbage. You always want a garbage player behind the goal so that if the ball goes long, somebody from your team is there. Oh, check to the head. Looking for the call, didn't get it. Not Unlucky. at all. That was a Ayers that was driving towards the goal there. Thought she had the ball, looked down at her stick. It was not there. Mercer Island now. Nice pressure. So Seattle Prep got a talking to. They're doubling the ball. They're pressuring Mercer Island. They're slowing it down. And look at this. They have possession. Mercer Island actually has not had possession yet over the 50 in the half. And we are over three minutes into the half. I mean, it's like a whole new game. Hey, Wrecking Ball Demolition is a proud sponsor of the Lacrosse Network Washington High School Game of the Week. Wrecking Ball Demolition offers full building demolitions, neater, cleaner, faster. Wrecking Ball Demolition, demolition with a difference. To learn more, visit WreckingBallDemo.com or call 425-339-3111. Once again, we have a scramble down on the... Seattle prep side of things. Don't Unfortunately, Moles got, it. Moles got it one more time. And here comes Mercer Island. Going to get a check called on number 21. That is Claire Calfo. 
We'll uh, allow Mercer Island number 16, Annalise Weiss, to have an open uh, look at this for a moment here. Passes the ball back into the middle. Great decision. You have to change the field of play. Defense was sucked all the way to this close side of the field. No one was on any of the Mercer Island players on the far side. And she's driving the ball all the way down. Mercer Island already with a 10-3 to lead. 27's wide open up top. There we go. That is Snead, the number 27, with the ball right now. Gets it back over to Sherper. Sherper already with four goals tonight. Let's see what she can do here. Great defense, number 11. Two hands on your stick. you got to be ready for her. She's Everyone's a threat. Sneathan with the ball up on top. Nice spin move by Sneathan. Pulls it back out again. Great defense by Seattle Prep. They're really communicating. Oops. They're really communicating, and they're hungry for it. They're seeing the ball better than they did in the first half. This is really good to see this adjustment. Mole momentarily found Dahlgren cutting across the middle. Couldn't quite hold on to it and kicks it back out to Mole. Nice pass into the <laughs> middle. Sherper shoots and scores. She is just so speedy. The, uh, the Dulcy Mole to uh, Tyler Sherper show continues. But look, 1945, they scored in the first three minutes of the game, and it took them six minutes to score in this half. So Seattle Prep really has stepped up. That's really impressive to see. Their efforts are not reflected on the scoreboard. It's just they're playing a very tough competitor. And they continue to fight. Hey, folks, Prime Spine Chiropractic Centers of Bellevue and Kirkland are teaming up with the Sammamish Lacrosse Club to raise money for the team while promoting spinal health in the community. With a $25 donation to Sammamish Lacrosse Club during the month of April, Prime Spine is offering a full chiropractic exam, including a full set of x-rays and an adjustment in the clinic. Each donation will be matched by Prime Spine 100% with a goal of reaching $1,000. Oh, man, that is such a disappointing turnover. Seattle Prep just worked so hard. Number 15 in the middle of the field beat, got around three players and passed it to her teammate, and she, she dropped the ball. That was really, really heartbreaking. <laughs> And Mercer Island once again threatening 1907 to go here in the ball game. We hate to say that this is a, a foregone conclusion that they're going to win, but they are sitting on a very comfortable lead right now. And are, uh, as you mentioned, Seattle Prep playing much better. However, still looking as though Mercer Island is the stronger team out here right now. Indeed. You know, some teams come alive in the second half, and this just comes with time and comes with playing together as a group. Um, I can speak from experience. My, my teams this year, they're a second-half team, and it seems like Seattle Prep, they just needed to, to get a vibe of what Mercer Island was all about and recognize they are beatable. They are beatable. You just got to play. You got to make some adjustments. Oh, Mole shoots Although, and scores. Opposite of what we saw last play, last time it was Mole passing to Sherper. This time, Sherper to Mole. 12 to 3 Mercer Island. Yeah, those two girls, they shoot with power and conviction and intensity. It's no joke. No joke. No, not at all. Hey, the Lacrosse Network Washington High School Game of the Week is produced in cooperation with US Lacrosse Washington State Chapter, Washington High School Boys Lacrosse Association and the Washington School Girls Lacrosse Association. Thanks to Tim Tim Exton and 715 Media for providing production services for tonight's broadcast. Special thanks to Mike McQuaid, the Sports Information Director of U.S. Lacrosse, Washington State Chapter, Mercer Island Athletic Director Jamie Prescott, and tonight's coaches, Liz Shields from Mercer Island and Lindsey Gillis from Seattle Prep. By the way, speaking of Liz Shields, we should mention Liz is from Australia and uh, mentioned to me earlier that not only are her two sons... Uh, Daniel and Matthew, who we mentioned earlier, go to uh, Mount Olive in North Carolina. Not only might they be watching this game tonight, but she has family back in Perth, Australia. Her dad, Bill, watches her games when he can. She also has two brothers and a sister. So the, uh, the, power, of the, global. the power of the internet and the power of the lacrosse network. We are going global, and if they are tuned in, they just saw one of her players, <laughs> Tyler Sherper, score her sixth goal of the she night. She just, she can't, she doesn't miss. If that's the case, you defensively, yeah, you call a timeout. You call a timeout, and you've got to tell your girls she cannot have the ball. You have got to deny her the opportunity, and let's see someone else go to goal. Sherper looking like she's a little bit winded, as well she should be. She has six goals, 17-34 to go here in the second half. 
Mercer Island 13, Seattle Prep 3. Think Fit Sticks to Schools is the youth fitness program of the Washington Stealth. With Sticks to Schools, Stealth players encourage fitness and healthy lifestyles by introducing lacrosse to your school or youth group. To bring Sticks to Schools to your school or youth group, or to learn how your business can support this initiative program, visit sticks2schools.com. That's sticks, the number two, schools.com. From Spokane to Seattle and Linden to Camas, high school lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in Washington State. Now in its fourth decade of play, 4,000 student athletes attending 200 schools in Washington State will play high school lacrosse this season. To learn more about high school lacrosse in Washington State, visit WashingtonHSLAX.com. That's WashingtonHSLAX.com. And presumably you might already be there anyway as we are broadcasting this game both on that website tonight and on YouTube where if you are on the lacrosse network, you can be watching us as we speak as well as many other lacrosse sporting events throughout the nation. Highly recommend you tune them in, the Lacrosse Network on YouTube. Share it with a family member. Get the word out. You've got to get that word out, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're spreading lacrosse the, all over, like we mentioned earlier. Hey, we've got the Shields watching us in Perth, Australia, for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you watch the game in all four corners of the country and everywhere in between? Absolutely. As, as you and I talked about earlier, this is the fastest growing sport. It was fun to talk to Lindsay Gillis a little bit about this. As um, Lindsay, again, her story is very interesting. She is not from this area, grew up uh, in the northeastern part of the country, played at Bowdoin College where she met Brad Gillis, who played right here at Mercer Island High School. Uh, she moved to Seattle two years ago and uh, started coaching Seattle Prep this year. I had a chance to ask Lindsay, I said, what is, uh, I said, I know we're, we're growing it out here. The sport's becoming more of a, a rapid fixture. We're not quite there yet, though, are we? And I asked her what she thought about the play of the girls up in this part of the country. Lindsay's response to me was that the numbers aren't there yet and the depth probably isn't there yet, but she feels that the top players in this region can play with just about anybody. I agree. You know, what we're seeing right now is finally the schools and the areas in the state that have had that have started peewee leagues. Those kids who started in fourth, fifth grade, they're now finally in high school. Mm -hmm. And so they've been playing for six years. When I started coaching, um, even just at Kennedy last year, I had 19 girls on my team. 11 of them had never played before. Wow. So, yeah, now that those feeder programs are really growing and the numbers are, are growing as well, now we're seeing skilled and talented players who can be competitive nationwide. And that's what's so exciting. And once we go WIAA and the, school, the state sanctions us and we're recognized as a viable sport, then middle schools and elementary schools and there will be more lacrosse and the high school level is just going to explode. And it's good that we have coaches like Lindsey Gillis throughout the area. Uh, a couple of different things that Lindsey was pointing out to me. We've already mentioned she has no seniors on this team. She mentioned that the JV team alone, probably 85% of their players never played lacrosse yep. until they played on the JV squad right now. Yep. And Seattle Prep doesn't even have a feeder team yet. Right. So as these teams start to grow... And exactly. they start to get them younger, like you mentioned. And that's the what the quality is going to go up. Exactly, that's what I'm dealing with at my team. And it's um, you get a few players who move to the school who have been playing for several years, and the knowledge that they bring the other girls are like, whoa, didn't even know that was possible. So we're all learning together. It's it's exciting, and it's really neat to be a part of this growth at this time. When I played, I think there were only 12 teams in the state. Yeah, and to, to hear Lindsay talk about her squad and her team. You you got you have to appreciate what she's going through, and she seems like she's really taking pride in seeing them develop. It may not be all about the wins and losses this year. Certainly, they're they're getting some of that. I mean, they're three and one in their division, but like she said, she couldn't be more proud of her girls, and she knows that I she's going to have every single one of them back next year, and, yep. and this team's only going to get better. Plus the JV kids. I mean, mm -hmm. they Seattle Prep, watch out for them. It's hard for these small schools too. Let's also remember because we are. Uh, not WIAA, we all play each other regardless of our size. Overlake, for example, typically ba barely has enough girls to field a team, and they play against Mercer Island, who has 400 girls in their high school. So, you know, for all of us to be competitive, it's, it's, um, 
it's tough. The The cards are not stacked evenly in some of these these schools and also some of these clubs who get to pick from several public schools the best athletes. So, um, like I said, it's all a process, and Seattle Prep should be very proud of themselves. They've got some really solid girls, and it'll be exciting to watch them next year. And they're playing hard right now, one of which Maggie McDonald, the goalkeeper, with a nice save a moment ago. Uh, Maggie, I'm told, is the, uh, in the words of Lindsay Gillis, the team hooligan, as she called it, <laughs> or, uh, kind of the prankster of the team, if you will, and uh, showing that she's no joke when it comes to shooting on goal. There is, uh, again, given up 13 goals tonight, but uh, she's had her share of uh, shots against her as well. Absolutely. So we'll she's, she's, been, she's been clutch in there, and I have a feeling she's out there talking and really communicating with her team because defensively Seattle prep looks so much better. Unlucky. Oh, and unfortunately, a shot on goal goes into the back of the net. I didn't see what happened. I believe that was number 12, Maddie Cantor. Oh, well, sorry. Well. I'm watching Seattle Prep. They're looking a little deflated. They worked so hard to slide, and they finally had a great double team. Number 11 here on Seattle Prep, who is Claire Calf Calfo. Oh, no, Olivia Calfish, she slid and made that double team, but just uh, number 12 on Mercer Island, um, she, Maddie Cantor, she just, she snuck in there. Yeah, we mentioned earlier, Clawfish is uh, number 11 on Seattle Prep, making the transition from goalkeeper to defender this year. And there we go, Seattle. Oh. Gillis has been very impressed with her play. There we go. Spread them out. Take your time. Take your time. At this point, the likelihood of you scoring 11 goals is slim, so just be, be meticulous. Be patient with the ball and give your defensive time some time to relax. And from the prep side of things, they do have one more game to play. It's going to be Friday at Ballard. And we don't know for sure how things are going to work out. It may or may not be for a playoff spot for Seattle Prep. So you, uh, you may not win this game tonight, but you certainly want to get some momentum going and get some things worked out and be ready for Friday. Absolutely. Seattle Prep there just got sucked into a draw and dump. Mercer Island's trying to capitalize on the a little bit of the mayhem in the defense. There's an open player. Now now they got her marked up. It's number 16 up on the top right now, Annalise Weiss. Mentioned Weiss with her uh, second goal of the season earlier tonight. What Mercer Island does so beautifully, they pass the ball and then they move away. They move away from the ball carrier so that the ball carrier has tons of space to move should she want to. Seattle prep number 27, Greta Richardson just got caught in three seconds. When, when an offense is moving so fluidly, it's hard to keep your eye on your player, and sometimes you get stuck inside the eight meter and you're only allowed to be in there for three seconds um, without being a stick length away. Cantor with another shot, her second of the half, shoots and scores. Running clock now as Mercer Island goes up 15-3 to with just a little over 12 minutes to go in the game. Yeah, I guess we were at running clock with 14-3, to but yes. Um, so now 10-goal ten, ten differential. There is running clock. They don't stop the clock after goals. And new, they also don't stop the clock within the last two minutes of the game. However, if Seattle Prep scores another two goals, um, or another three goals, pardon me, then it will uh, – the clock will stop as well. And as we were saying that, the clock was running the entire time. We're down to 11.39 to go here in the game. Hey, the Lacrosse Network Washington High School Game of the Week is produced in cooperation with U.S. Lacrosse Washington State Chapter, Washington High School Boys Lacrosse Association, and the Washington School Girls Lacrosse Association. Thanks to Tim Exton and 715 Media for providing production services for tonight's game. Special thanks to Mike McQuaid over at the U.S. Lacrosse Washington State Chapter, Mercer Island High School Athletic Director Jamie Prescott, and tonight's coaches Liz Shields from Mercer Island and Lindsey Gillis from Seattle Prep. We are now down to 11 minutes go to go in the game. 11. Sounds like a weird number. 11 <laughs> minutes to go in the ball game. We got that right finally. Katie Harris with oh, a shot lucky. off the top of the bar there. Misses. Ball is loose. Can't figure it out. Mercer Island comes up with it. Oh, they're still scrambling. And they do finally come up with it. Mercer Island pulling back here a little bit. Certainly nothing to rush over. They've got a 12-goal lead with 10.37 to go in the game. They will keep going. You know, I, I, I appreciate Mercer Island's stick work. They have tight sticks and tight skills. 
the ball very rarely goes down. One of the reasons is, is their top hand is in control of their stick. Their top hand is at the top of their stick. If I could get my girls to hold the top of the stick like that, we'd have a different season. This is, I mean, they're they're holding a clinic on how to how to have tight stick skills. It's nice to see. Score. Shoot and score. That is Sneathan. We talked about her earlier. She has 21 goals on the year going into tonight, and she now has 22. Surprisingly enough, was not one of the first 15 goals earlier. She always seems to be in the net. Gets on the board here with 9.50 to go. Mercer Island now with a 16-3 to lead. Hey, Wrecking Ball Demolition is a proud sponsor of the Lacrosse Network Washington High School Game of the Week. Wrecking Ball Demolition offers full building demolitions, neater, cleaner, faster. Wrecking Ball Demolition, demolition with a difference. To learn more, visit WreckingBallDemo.com or call 425-339-3111. And this is one of those moments here too, and I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, or I talked about it rather on the phone today with Liz Shields, the coach of Mercer Island. You kind of know you're going to have games like this throughout the season in which you're going to get up on your opponent big, there's just the the level of a play there. It isn't quite the same. She feels like the key to some of their her team's success and what they need to work on is still maintaining the style of play that they want to, even in a game like this. I know uh, you don't like to see the, the score run up necessarily, but at the same time, you don't want your team to get too sloppy because you do still have three more regular season games to go as well as the playoffs, and you don't want them to kind of fall I, out of their rhythm as well. I right? agree with you. I, I agree with you. I think at some point um, – at this level of competition, uh, there are things you can do to keep your team challenged and keep them in the game. Um, so that's just an issue. I mean, that's just – that's my own personal opinion. You know, may require everyone to shoot lefty or sure. has to. But, um, you know, Mercer Island, they are – they're tired. They're relentless. They just – they keep pounding. And pounding. I guess the point being, even if they're not shooting on goal, you still want to see them – Practicing hard. the fundamentals. Exactly. You don't want Practice them to lose your that. Plays. Yeah. Oh, and, and show me that you can shoot. Take it into goal. Move the goalie and say, I could have scored just then. You know? And conversely, from the Seattle prep side of things, you certainly want your, your players showing that they've got heart and they're they're not going to quit either, right? Absolutely. I mean, everything's got to be viable. I've seen, I've seen teams win games from five behind in the last five minutes of a game. You know, 13 is a different story. <laughs> but... Seattle Prep is playing a great game. I, I cannot say enough um, ac too many accolades for Seattle Prep. I think they're playing beautifully. And, again, for uh, if nothing else, they are not giving up. They're still playing tough here. They, they already know the outcome of this game as yeah. far as where it's going to go in the win and loss column. But they're going to play to the very end. Absolutely, and they should have their heads held high. This is really – this is a great showing. Mercer Island's a, Mercer Island's a powerhouse. I mean, and they should be. They have 11 seniors who've all played together for years. So it's good to see solid lacrosse being played in the state. And just as we talk about Seattle Prep not giving up, we see number 10, Olivia, I'm sorry, Annie Gillis, number 10, come right down the field, running right down the middle of the lane there. Unfortunately for Gillis, she gets picked up by a couple defenders, isn't able to score, and once again, Mercer Island on the attack. Loose there ball there, go, and goalie. Maggie McDonald go. coming out you to pick it go. up. Uh-oh. It's a risk a goalie takes when she comes out of the cage, but she, she did that well, and there we go. Nice transition. Let's see if Seattle Prep can – oh, unlucky. Nice pass by Mia Campbell. Hey, by the way, fun little stories here. I asked Lindsay Gillis if she had any fun little antidotes to share with us, and she mentioned Mia Campbell by name. Apparently Mia and Morgan Wilkes, number 25, Irish dancers. Oh. So uh, I guess they entertain their team from time to time with some Irish dance moves. Oh, I like that. So uh, I don't know if that uh, it helps on the uh, the field necessarily, but at least it's fun, Quick right? Quick feet, absolutely. <laughs> I've got a dancer on one of my college teams, man. She is fit. Dancing is a good workout. They're fluid. No. Yeah. Any Irish dancing for you, or are we gonna? No. No. Okay. No. Not. Not. That's not gonna happen. Unfortunately. I was going to say, we could have Tim swing the camera over to catch some of that, but if you're uh, <laughs> if you're more comfortable and content on the booth, we'll, uh, we'll let that one go. Let's focus on the girls. <laughs> Let's focus on the girls. We'll do that. Yeah. 
Speaking of the girls, we are now down below the five and a half minute mark. Mercer Island holding on, holding on, continuing with their 16 to three lead here. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, it might be best if we don't run up the score too much. They are very content just to uh, pass the ball around here yeah. a little bit, work Which their looks offense. Good. You know, they might be running a stall right now, practicing that. So what, um, you know, right now it's, it's, important that Seattle prep gets the ball if Seattle if Mercer Island's running a stall what should be happening happening on defense is that all the defense should be right on their player so you deny the pass so everybody's pressuring their player instead of hanging out but now Mercer Island has just brought it back in and it looks like if they have an opportunity, which they're aiming for, they're no longer installed, they're going to score right here. And there it is. A <laughs> shot on goal and a shot into the back of the net. Katie Harris scores her second goal of the night. Yeah. Looking, to, We talked to uh, Brett Agata at halftime. That is looking like a football score right now. Mercer Island yeah. 17, Seattle Prep 3, just a little under four and a half to go. Yeah. And this is, I just would like to say one thing about the sport. I, I appreciate beautiful lacrosse and Mercer Island is playing a beautiful game. And, you know, going WIAA will even the playing field. Seattle Prep has no, in, a, in terms of size of school, really no business playing against Mercer Island. That's why there are different school leagues and divisions. And that's, that's my hope for WIAA is so that the girls get to play where, where they're best suited. Sure. And hopefully we'll see that very soon, yeah. as uh, we talked about earlier. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's got my vote. Could be right around the corner. I hope so. And we are now under the four-minute mark. Hey, Prime Spine Chiropractic Centers of Bellevue and Kirkland are teaming up with the Sammamish Lacrosse Club to raise money for the team while promoting spinal health care in the community oh. with a $25 donation to the Sammamish Lacrosse Club during the month of April. Prime Spine is offering a full chiropractic exam, including a full set of x-rays and an adjustment in the clinic. Each donation is matched by Prime Spine 100% with a goal of reaching $1,000. Great defense by Seattle Prep. They're making those adjustments. Go to primespine.com for more information on how you can take part in that Sammamish Lacrosse fundraiser. And we are now right around the three-minute mark, 3.04 to go here in the ballgame. Mercer Island with a 17-3 lead. Might they go for goal number 18? Talia, what do you think here? I have a feeling they will. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bainbridge Island, in fairness, scored 18 on Seattle Prep, right? Are they trying to match that right now? Or uh, or maybe you just pull back and play some catch for a couple minutes. Maybe. We'll see. I have a feeling they'll try to go beyond 18, personally. We'll Let see. Me. And again, 2.38 to go here. And there we go. Number 18 is in the back of the net. Surprise, surprise. Dulcie Mole with her fifth goal of the night. She now has 24 on the year, and the senior puts her team up 18 to three with 2:22 to go. Because the clock is running, uh, they have less time to score more goals. If it was a, yeah. We should uh, point out also <laughs> that the uh, you're, you've been on the other side of these games, haven't you? I, I can have, tell. And it's not, you know, I. It's I, not, yeah. It's um. Again, I can appreciate beautiful lacrosse, and I think both teams, given their strengths, have played a beautiful game of lacrosse tonight. Um, you know, I just I, I like to see the spirit of the game being honored and the spirit of our players being honored too. And that is fair enough. Hey, by the way, uh, you segued me rather nicely. Speaking of great lacrosse, the next broadcast, May 3rd, which is, a, uh, which is next week, We've got a boys matchup between Mercer Island, the Islanders right here, and the Bellevue Wolverines. Oh, that's going to be a great game. That's going to be a phenomenal game. Two teams that are undefeated within division play this year. The two teams that kind of look like they might be the teams to beat for the state championship. Sure. And we will have that right here on the Lacrosse Network. Again, that is May 3rd. It is a Friday, 8 p.m. on the Lacrosse Network. And you can see that at WashingtonHSLAX.com. That's exciting. Under the two-minute mark now, the clock has sh shut off as it's now being kept on the field. Seattle Prep uh, trying to salvage maybe a little bit more respectability here. Trying to get their fourth goal of the night. Let's see if they can do it. Nice drive into the lane. Foul. F foul is called, and let's see what we have. I can't tell what the foul was. Maybe a, maybe cross across the body check. Kayla Ayers, uh, again, 21 goals on the season, still looking for her first one of the night. Let's see if she can get it right here. 
There's no blue player down low. It's all white. Good Here's defense, Mercer shoots Island. Shoots and just wide Great. left and high. Great defense, Mercer Island. Great positioning. You mentioned the uh, the garbage position there. Uh, Mercer Island able to back yeah. that one up. They get the ball now, and here they come. They, they want to end with a goal. Looks like they – oh. Sneathan with the ball right now. Ball is loose. However, Seattle Prep is able to pick it up. And that's – 27 on 27. That's Greta Richardson with Seattle Prep. Safran, Safran Sneathan with Mercer Island. I am really impressed with Seattle Prep's play. I am really impressed. It's going to be fun to play them next year. Note to self. <laughs> and on that note again, Seattle Prep uh, will be finishing up at Ballard next Tuesday. And uh, again, a game that could have playoff implications for them. Stay tuned. The final horn goes off, and your score here tonight, it's a final, folks. Mercer Island, 18, Seattle Prep, 3. So, again, we're looking at the stats here. Very one-sided. Uh, we'll just start off by looking at Seattle Prep. Three goals from three different players. Uh, Annie Gillis, number 10, coming up with her 25th goal of the year. Maggie Slack, who uh, showed a lot of energy tonight. Mm -hmm. Fun to watch her hustle all over the field with her 13th goal of the year. And Greta Richardson, number 27, with her 19th goal of the year. And I have to say, Greta Richardson, when I played her, I, I didn't really notice the extent to her skill. She is a great player. It's it's really nice to watch her play in the center for Seattle Prep. I, I look forward to seeing what else happens for her. And for Mercer Island, unofficially, we'll save the best two or the biggest two numbers for last. Madison Blackburn, number two, with one goal, her 15th on the year. Maddie Cantor scored two tonight, goals number five and six on the year for number 12. Annalise Weiss, number 16, getting her second goal of the season. Katie Harris, who wears number 22, scored two goals tonight. She now has six on the year. Safran Sneathan, we mentioned her a few times, the midfielder who's going to Mount Olive College next year to play lacrosse, scores her 22nd goal of the year. And then the two big guns tonight, Taylor Sherper and Dulce Mole. Sherper with six goals, Mole with five. Those two players having phenomenal years. Again, Sherper now has 40 goals on the season. She'll be taking her skills to Colgate next year. Mole now has 24 goals on the year with her five goals tonight. Going to the University of Redlands, a Division three school next year. Those uh, those players are far far from done this year as well as they are they will finish out their their season with games against Ballard, Issaquah, and Bainbridge over the next week and a half, and then it's on to the playoffs. Then it is. It should be a competitive year this year for the playoffs. It'll be exciting to see. Hopefully, be a part of. Well, and I'll tell you what, uh, Mercer Island playing the way they did tonight. If they can continue this, I, I know they've lost two games already. Uh, they lost to Lakeside by four goals earlier this year. Lost to Lake Sammamish by five. I know when we talked to uh, Megan Maniger the, from the Mercer Island Reporter, she was at that Lakeside game. She thought the score was a lot closer, or the game was closer, and she doesn't think there was that much of a discrepancy. Mm. This is a Mercer Island team that could compete for a title this year. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I mean, Lakeside's very senior heavy too. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Should be fun to watch. Well, yeah. again, uh, Talia Klein, the coach of Kennedy Catholic, you coach at Seattle University yeah. as well. Thanks for joining us tonight and Absolutely. continued success in your uh, your coaching uh, career and uh, hope to have you back here shortly. Good times. All right. Thanks again for uh, for being on tonight. So once again, we're going to sign out here. Your final score, Mercer Island 18, Seattle Prep 3. You've been watching the Washington State High School Lacrosse Game of the Week on the Lacrosse Network. We'll see you on May 3rd for the boys game between Mercer Island and Bellevue. Good night.